In this lecture, we'll address the last part of um, IT governance, which is IT security, security and the business community. And uh, essentially, our main idea here is to protect corporate IT um, from malice and disaster. And uh, this needs to be a part of IT governance. Uh, before we start, uh, let's get into some jargon. Um, we have IT security breach, which is malicious effort to make either an IT system inaccessible to its users or steal sensitive data or intellectual property. Security trade-off is increasing IT security, which causes more inconvenience to the users. Social engineering is to tricking a legitimate user uh, to access a system. Uh, essentially, it's not a te technological way to break into a system, but actually tricking somebody um, out of their passwords or a lot, giving you access to a system that way. Security credentials, something you know, have, or are, the more the better. And a continuity planning is a tactical plan to resume operations if your IT portfolio is compromised. So, Let's look at IT as a vulnerable business engine. Uh, imagine if you uh, could not see a burglar inside your house while he stole your stuff. He remains undetected for six months and you could not tell what he stole even months later. So it's really different from conventional theft where you can spot them, catch them, tally the missing stuff um, sometimes. IT intrusion, on the hand, is often invisible, undetected for months, aftermath is unknowable, and culprits tend to be uh, untraceable because they are good at covering their tracks. So let's look at the security problem that we have. A single corporate breach, security breach, costs about $4 million on average. It takes firms about five months to recognize the breach. So think about it. If you have been robbed, your house has been robbed, it takes you five months to figure out that you've been robbed. Um, eight months uh, where hackers are able to roam freely after a break-in. Um, you also have issues of industrial espionage, which costs um, half a trillion dollars a year. This is equal to Austria's GDP. Um, mega breaches, which are which is more than 10 million records are stolen, are increasingly common. Um, and IT security, um, which is not strategic when, when it fails, can threaten the survival of a firm. And the penalties because of this IT uh, breaches can paralyze operation, compromise sensitive information, huge reputational damage, and even threaten the firm survival of a firm. IT security breaches are widely unreported uh, because of liability, negative publicity, uh, and um, they tend to, companies take time to come out uh, with a breach, reporting of a breach. and. A lot of times, the breach is not because of technology issues. So even the strongest technology cannot contribute to what a non-IT manager um, can. So let's look at the cost of one stolen record in different industries. And as you can see, financial, pharmaceutical, and healthcare industries, the cost is a lot higher than services, industry, and retail. And it's essentially where you're more, the more regulated industry is, the more expensive a security breach is, especially healthcare, where healthcare data privacy is so important. Let's begin by discarding the myth of secure computing. Uh, the aspiration should be acceptable, and, and but not perfect security and resilience to rapidly bounce back from breaches. Uh, there are two broad IT security threats that firms face that compromises in availability called denial of service and then intrusion into internal corp corporate systems. 
Availability is often compromised uh, by denial of service attacks where malicious outsider overwhelms a corporate IT system with so much traffic that it renders it unresponsible, uh, unresponsive to legitimate users. Uh, intrusion, called hacking in popular culture, is usually in search of sensitive data and intellectual uh, property. Um, there's a whole eBay-like underground community, global community called Darknets, that exists to buy and sell stolen intellectual property and financial data, such as credit card numbers. So let's go back to our secure computing, the myth, and uh, let's just throw it away. So the focus and aspiration should be acceptable. What is acceptable level of security and the resilience to bounce back without major losses? An IT unit is responsible for um, solidly executing, implementing and executing IT security, uh, but some IT assets need more protection than the others, and not every IT assets are equally important. And judgment about what is more important um, essentially comes from non-IT managers because these are business judgments. So let's look again, which has been our entire focus on where non-IT managers can contribute to um, these decisions. Um, IT unit must know uh, with explicit guidance from non-IT managers what data and applications are more critical. And there is a, an issue of security versus convenience trade-off. So the more convenient something is, uh, the less secure it's going to be because it's about accessibility. And so you've got to have a decision on what level of trade-off is acceptable. So IT infrastructure needs the least amount of input from business users. Since it's largely a technical challenge, uh, IT unit is best positioned to handle this uh, completely. With IT applications, line functions um, not IT units are more knowledgeable on which IT apps need uh, what level of protection. Um, application vulnerabilities are occasional brute force attacks that forcibly access them, and more widespread uh, approach of convincing a legitimate user inside your firm to willingly divulge information needed, and it's called social engineering. An IT unit is responsible for executing the security policies. And finally, data. The non-IT manager's primary contribution to the firm's IT security decisions are data related. Most security breaches are motivated to get the confidential um, information or alter data. Um, you, you, they want to essentially get your customer's financial information, trade secrets, intellectual property rights, uh, intellectual property data. And what data is more sensitive varies by industry. It could be your accounts data uh, for banks, R&D data for drug firms, cons consumer financial data or pricing data for retailers. And IT units often do not, um, are not given explicit instructions and guidance from non-IT managers on what data assets are most uh, critical and important. So, uh, here is an example of Target and how Target became the Target right after, I mean, and here is Target, uh, a Target show right after its breach. Now, this was, um, this happened, and it's one of the biggest retail hacks in U.S. history, 2013 Christmas season. The, origin, the attack was really sloppy, unoriginal, but very successful. The hacker installed a little piece of malicious software in Target's payment processing system. And the hackers designed it to steal every credit card that would be used in Target's 1800 US stores. Anytime a customer swiped a credit card uh, to pay for a purchase, the malware would quietly make a copy of the credit card number and then ferret it into one of uh, Target's own hijack servers. Um, this went on for two weeks undetected and the hackers cleverly planned 
the data's escape route to cover their tracks. It would bounce around several locations throughout the United States, then to Russia. To make sure it escaped detection, it blended with legitimate data traffic. Um, they siphoned it out of Target's own servers only during its busiest times, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And um, this is this is essentially like when a bad guy runs through a crowded uh, subway station and gets lost in a crowd. This is like a Hollywood movie. And 40 million credit cards and 70 million customer addresses were lost. Target sales in the busy holiday season plummeted. And if you look at what went wrong, uh, it was completely due to human failings. Target had anticipated the problems, which, it, which is why it had the same security software as the U.S. Uh, Central Intelligence Agency used. Its thinking was that if it is good enough for CIA, it should be good enough for the retailer. Uh, but if you're breaking into someone's house, you don't try knocking down a wall. Instead, you look for a weak spot, an open window, a flimsy backdoor. Target's weak spot was a vendor with which it did business. The hackers used the credentials of a small company in Pittsburgh that maintained Target's refrigeration systems to enter, to enter the corporate network. Now, if you talk to any IT person, they will tell you that you should wall off IT systems with sensitive data from the ones your vendor, refrigeration vendor, can access. Um, now, however, there were holes in this wall, which was a problem with how they built their architecture. Now, go back to the earlier chapter where we talked about architecture. So the hackers cloaked their stolen data using the name of widely used software used to protect credit card data. Target security team thought they were seeing a legitimate program file as the stolen stash passed right in front of them. The CIA grade malware detector did no good because target security turned off a critical part of it thinking it was creating too many false positives or false alarms target had to spend 500 million a year for the next two years to mitigate a damage that's basically billion dollars this appears as unusual expense in its 2014 and 2015 annual reports it is hard to estimate the cost of lost customer confidence and tarnished image. And this incident um, um, basically cost the CEO and the CIO their jobs. So if you look at it, it was more due to process rather than um, this, that Target didn't have the technology. Target had the technology, but they didn't put in the right processes in place and didn't think through their architecture. So... Um, you must grasp how IT is secured technically to appreciate why technical approaches fail. Um, IT is secured using uh, something you know, password or access code, something you have, a card, ATM card or a smart card, and something you are, fingerprint or retina scanner. And these are, this is called multi-factor authentication and your outside attacks usually focus on getting your password or chip cards um, and they try to handle that and the technical safeguards come from credit card industry inspired intrusion detection which scan for suspicious patterns and then intrusion prevention which blocks access as soon as these patterns occur so these can handle um, suspicious technical activities uh, and but they are defenseless when you your you give your password away because you're tricked into giving it or somebody installs a spyware which logs all your um, keys you're pressing and therefore captures your keystrokes um, and and so that's a hard thing to block against so it's easier to fool a human being than a machine. And then it doesn't handle rogue insiders where even fingerprints and retina scans, uh, as we can see by the Snowdon, uh, Snowdon incident, um, can um, there's nothing you can do when it's an insider. So this whole technology or technical only approach uh, overemphasizes on identifiable risks and lulls firm, 
firms into an unfounded complacency. So here are five non-technical reasons for IT security failures. Uh, so you have five reasons. Um, firms view IT as a technical problem and therefore it is the IT unit's problem. And then therefore there's no safeguard against the number one risk which is human blunders. Um, so it's like treating your home security as your lockmaker's responsibility. Even the strongest lock will not protect you if you do not follow basic security hygiene, that is properly locking your door, hiding your passport uh, better than your coffee machine, and not handing your, out your keys to strangers and being observant. For IT, this parallels using security tools properly, holding sensitive data to higher security standard, and preempting social engineering and sensitizing business users. Um, human blunders, not inadequate technology, open the door to a vast majority of successful data breaches. Your IT unit has very little power to affect good behavior without a push from non-IT managers for good security hygiene within line functions. Avoiding human blunders requires fostering a firm-wide culture of responsibility and awareness among business users. You must reinforce it with training, irrespective of whether you incentivize it with carrots or sticks. The second one is overlooking the insider's threats. Um, yes, there are mastermind hackers from China and Russia, which get all the press, but the real danger is your own employees and connected business partners in your firm's value stream, uh, especially now that we have a supply chain which is highly interconnected using technologies. Breaches can be accidental slip-ups or intentional act actions by malicious or disgruntled employees. Firms obsess over safeguarding from outside attacks, but really have not looked at ones against inside attacks. Insider attacks are the single largest IT security vulner vulnerability. Uh, insiders have easier access, more opportunities, and, and most widespread security policies and protections are, dis are defenseless against uh, the next one is a porous boundary, uh, interfirm boundary with business partners. Um, this is happening because we do share data now. We have an interconnected supply chain, makes data more valuable, but also more vulnerable. And um, increased connectivity uh, creates uh, weakest links that defines vulnerability. And finally, there is um, convenience security imbalance. Now, this is a business, not a technical decision. Uh, you've got to figure out which pieces need more convenience um, and which does not. Um, you're, if you force your employees and customers to jump through too many hoops, um, it might actually uh, harm your business. Um, so this is essentially a business decision, not a technical one. Uh, now, if your customers cannot trust your firm, though, uh, rest does not matter. So non-IT managers must decide explicitly the levels of security risk that are acceptable to your firm. And now we are looking at the Internet of Things, which escalates both the vulnerability and customer expectations of security. Uh, billions of objects, such as cars, appliances, medical devices, are joining the internet and it opens up many more deep interfaces to corporate IT systems for malicious attack. Um, weaker computing power of devices, these devices invariably limits their security software to being rudimentary. Large volumes of internet traffic that they produce make it harder to detect and this escalates an inconvenience um, to a matter of personal safety. So. Some of the safeguards um, we talked about need for internal controls and user awareness. Uh, IT access policy should be tailored to your firm. Um, this would help, especially when you're looking at the insider threat to have proper access policies. Who gets to access what parts of your systems? Um, there is no reason for 
your refrigeration vendor to have access um, to some of your you know, customer credit card um, data. So it's important to have clear-cut access policies. Uh, IT units should only implement and not create them. So this needs to come from uh, your managers, line managers, and six other practices. Uh, monitor employee IT usage for patterns of suspicious activities and be transparent about monitoring. Knowing that our, uh, you know, people are being watched, like theft, deterrent cameras and storage, psychologically discourages undesirable behavior. Um, encrypt data, sensitive data for transit and storage. Um, therefore, it's scrambled, it's difficult, only the owners can decrypt them. Wall off systems with truly sensitive data from others. Unlink sensitive data from other data to minimize the damage if it's stolen. Example, using a customer identification number instead of social security number um, makes sense. Anonymize sensitive data if only aggregates are needed for analytics um, and refrain from collecting excessive data because you can. Now, this is, this is something I think most companies struggle with uh, because um, it, there's this, given that storage, data storage is getting cheaper and cheaper, companies tend to collect all the data they can. So um, let's talk about um, preparing for a security crisis. What is the role of um, non-IT managers when you have a security crisis? Um, and these require skills which rarely used in day-to-day -day activities. Um, so advanced preparation is important. Uh, even the best laid plans um, can fail if their documentation is outdated or if they are too generic for individual employees to act in their intended responsibilities after a security breach. Walk through a dress rehearsal of how you would handle a security in incident internally and externally to minimize its damage, like uh, reading the safety leaflet on a plane, um, hoping you'll never need it, but knowing it is important and it's foolhardy to miss the instructions. Um, have a fast response. Sloppy response, poor or slow, can be very damaging, as damaging as the breach, or sometimes more damaging. The first few hours count the most in mitigating damage. Get outside help to objectively evaluate the situation and quickly notify affected users um, and even shut down operational IT systems if the data breach is ongoing. And then focus on long term. Um, how much long-term damage a security breach inflicts depends on not only the gravity, but also the quality of your firm's communication with its inside and outside stakeholders. In the long term, it matters how you have handled the security breach. Reassuring customers how, of how it will never repeat. Uh, good faith effort counts long-term. Uh, be honest in communicating with your customers misinformation and inaccurate information backfires tremendously. The IT environments are replete with redundancies and backups that kick in if a specific piece of hardware fails. Business continuity planning is concerned with the disruption of the entire environment by unexpected disasters such as hurricanes, blackouts, fires, floods, etc. Their effect can range from outage to complete destruction. So just like you keep a spare tire in your car or a fire extinguisher in your home, planning for them is insurance against the worst that you hope you never need. Business continuity planning is tactical planning for quickly resuming your firm's operation after a disaster uh, or catastrophe. Um, Disaster recovery is a subset focused on getting IT operations back up and running after disaster. Checklists widely taught to IT managers codify much of the disaster recovery plan, but business continuity planning um, must evolve, involve all vulnerable line functions. You have to 
get your business continuity planning down to core business risks that can derail your firm's revenue stream. So let's look at an example of hot, warm, or cold sites and the speed at which um, you can recover. So the faster you switch your firm's critical IT operations to a backup site, the costlier it is. So a, a hot site is fully operational instantaneously uh, with a usable replica of your firm's mission critical IT assets. The data is almost identical copy of the data in the operational systems before the disaster hit. And this is the costliest choice, but it's the fastest you can have. The more your firm has custom built IT applications and proprietary applications, the greater is the care needed in the, for in the business continuity planning because less standardized IT assets can be harder to replicate in a hot backup site. A cold site here is the opposite extreme. It's inexpensive, but very slow to start. It requires setup, uh, setup when needed because it has doesn't have the data or the hardware. It is typically a trailer with a power source, internet connectivity and workspace. Warm sites are somewhere in between, cheaper to maintain than hot sites, more expensive than cold sites. They include mission critical IT applications, hardware and data. However, the data is not current and it's lagged. Non-IT managers judgment should drive these options which make the most business sense. So here's where um, non-IT managers contribute to continuity planning. And there are three questions determine the ongoing costs acceptable for scope and responsiveness. First, what IT assets are critical? What are mission critical IT assets without which your line functions activity will come to a standstill? This must cover their dependency on other IT assets, including those that stretch into partner firms. Non-IT managers must define what constitutes critical. Critical refers to revenue generating activities for firm and delivery of promised services for nonprofit and government organizations. Begin by identifying vulnerable business processes involving primary activities in your value chain and the consequences if they went down in a few days or weeks. Second is the recovery time objective. How long can your firm withstand interruption in each one of them? How quickly must you restore each one to prevent loss of revenues and public trust? What is the maximum tolerable downtime after which irreversible consequences arise? And then the recovery point objective is how old can recovered data be? How much data loss, not theft, can a firm survive uh, depends on its industry. Um, so a brokerage firm, for example, cannot survive any loss of financial transaction data. And non-IT managers answer to these questions to determine whether the steep cost of a hot site is warranted or whether we can have a cold site. Remember that firms' IT systems are also largely important to uh, produce compliant data for federal regulations like the Sarbanes-Oxley Act and destruction of its ITSS does not get it off the hook for compliance reporting. So to summarize this, uh, we have to understand that IT insecurity is unavoidable, comes with when you create connectivity, and it risks derailing firms' operations, and a lot of the breaches are human failings. Humans tend to be more hackable than machines there is a lot of focus on technical solutions which builds overconfidence to companies and this makes IT security kind of naive. Um, security is not just IT's responsibility or just a technical problem. Non-IT managers involvement contributes to what IT cannot do, which is to prioritize what's protecting, worth protecting mitigating business consequence 
and strike the right balance for security convenience, uh, uh, the balance between security and convenience.